In this video, we talk about the idea of diagonalization, how that can help us solve non-homogeneous linear systems. So let's see an example here of why this could be useful. So look at this system here. X prime is the matrix 2, 0, 0, 3 times X plus the vector T e to the minus T. Now in this case, if we break this up into different components, right, this tells us that X1 prime, X2 prime equals 2x1 plus 0x2, 0x1 plus 3x2, plus t plus e to the minus t. So really what I have here is two completely separate differential equations. I have x1 prime equals 2x1 plus t, and I have x2 prime is 3x2 plus e to the minus t. These are both separate, so I can solve these individually and then restack them up into a solution to the entire problem. For instance, we do this by integrating factors. Integrating factor for the first side is e to the minus 2t. Then we can solve up for x1. And do the same thing for x2. And then combine these into a solution to the non-homogeneous problem in a form that'll make more sense. We can write this as our vector x is going to be x1, which I'll put the first part here, negative 1 half t minus 1 fourth, and then a negative 1 fourth e to the minus t plus a c1 times the vector 1, 0, e to the 2t, plus c2, a vector 0, 1, e to the 3t, because the e to the 3t term was in x2 on the bottom, and the e to the 2t was in the x1 on the top. And this looks like it's more in the proper form. This looks like an eigenvector solution for eigenvalue 2. This is a solution for eigenvalue 3. And this part then solves the non-homogeneous problem. Now why did this work out so great? This worked out great because this matrix here was a diagonal matrix. The only non-zero entries were on the diagonal. And in that sense, we get what's called a decoupled system and that really, X1, X2 don't really interact with each other at all. They are doing their own thing separately on their own, just kind of doing it at the same time. So if we have a diagonal matrix, that's great. It's a decoupled system. I can then solve each part on its own. It's a first order linear equation with constant coefficients. I can integrate things and be great. And that's awesome. But now the question is, can we convert a matrix that is not diagonal into one that is so that we can use this method to solve these types of equations? It turns out that we can, and we can do it using eigenvalues. The main result is the following. If A is an n by n matrix with n real distinct eigenvalues, then we can rewrite A as A equals P D P inverse, where D is a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues of A, and P is a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors of A in the same order as the eigenvalues were put into D. If you want some reasons as to why this works, the idea is basically it works for every eigenvector. So if I apply an eigenvector, I say A applied to an eigenvector, that gets me lambda times that eigenvector. Great. If I go to this side, when I apply P inverse, that converts the eigenvector into just a single entry corresponding to which column that eigenvector was in. D then multiplies that column by the appropriate eigenvalue, and then P reconverts it into the eigenvector at the end. So I get the same process for all the eigenvectors. And since I have n real distinct eigenvalues, I have a basis of eigenvectors, so it works everywhere. But we're just going to kind of use this fact to try to solve our problem. How does this help us? Well, our system starts in the form x prime equals a times x plus a vector function f. I'm going to define a new variable, a vector y, which is going to be p inverse times x, or the way we're going to use it, x I'm going to replace by py. So if I do that, I get that p times y prime equals a times py plus f. Now a, we know we can rewrite as p times d times p inverse. And since p is constant, py prime is just p times y prime. These two here become the identity. And if I multiply both sides by p inverse on the left, I will get that y prime equals d y plus p inverse f. 
since I know P inverse, I can compute this to give me say some function G. But now this here is a diagonal matrix corresponding to the eigenvalues of A. So this is now a decoupled system. So we can solve this decoupled system to get the answer. And then I can multiply that by P to go back to X. Then since X is P Y, I can convert this Y solution into the X one that I wanted in the first place. So to solve this, we would need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, find D and find P, use that to find this decoupled system and solve it, and then multiply it by the matrix P to the solution that I want. It can end up being kind of long and tedious, but the idea is there that it will get us to a solution to the non-homogeneous problem by diagonalizing the matrix and then converting back at the end to get the answer.